Ten people vying for some of the state's top political offices took the stage last night to explain why they deserve your vote this election season. This morning, KITV4's Aaron Coogan joins us live in Pearl City with longtime Hawaii political analyst Dan Boylan to break down some of the candidates' responses. Aaron? Yeah, good morning to you, Leo Maleka. Well, historically, a very liberal state we are here in Hawaii. So to break down some of the Republican debate that we saw last night, I have Dan with me again. So, you know, the political climate here, uh, pretty consistent. So let's talk about some of those challenges that, that our candidates had to face last night. Well, I, the Republicans, I think most of us who, fo who followed local politics for a long time, pretty much dismissed them uh, because they're, they're uh, particularly as the Republican Party nationally has moved further to the right, the local Republican Party also has a sort of sort of uh, devotion to, uh, it has to, the position of the National Party, and it's become more conservative. Uh, all three of the candidates, uh, Heidi Suniyoshi, Sunio I can't say her name very well, Duke Iona and Gary Cordery, came out uh, last night in the constitutional uh, to support uh, constitutional Second uh, Amendment right to bear arms, uh, and that Amer that Hawaii's strict uh, gun laws, which are some of the strictest in the nation, uh, uh, should be relaxed in some way, shape, or form, or, or abolished, if you will. That the constitutional right to bear arms is most prominent, and that's a, re a Republican position. Uh, also, all three of them were pro-life. Well, remember, uh, you'll notice in the paper week after week where we're seeing the, the role of, uh, of Hawaii in leading uh, on uh, expanded rights for women. Uh, Patsy Mink, after all, uh, was a Japanese American from Hawaii who was elected to the United States Congress. Uh, and she uh, was a leader uh, in the movement for greater rights for, for women. And we've, we're a state that has had a woman governor, uh, Linda Lingle, a Republican. Uh, the only Republican uh, to win the governorship was a woman uh, in the uh, as a Republican. We were talking about their polar am answers, you know, really uh, hitting heavy on both sides of, of you know, the, the conservative side. You were thinking, you know, the Republicans taking a more moderate approach uh, would be more successful. Like well, it has been more successful. I mean, there, there was a, there was a, time in my memory not not so very long ago when there were a dozen or more members of the state legislature uh, who were Republicans. We we had a Republican senator for many years, uh, Hiram Fong, uh, who was a moderate. Uh, we had... We, so anyone notable from last night, from, from your perspective? Uh, well... Uh, from the Republican. Well, I thought uh, Gary Cordery was often quite uh, eloquent in taking positions which were quite conservative. Duke Iona, we all know Duke because he was the lieutenant governor for eight years under under Linda Lingle, and he was a judge. Uh, uh, I, I, know, I know Duke fairly well or knew him well uh, when, he, when he was in office and always found him uh, a, a fairly moderate a guy. I don't know much about Heidi Sunuoshi, but she's, you know, she's w one elective office. She's a woman in politics. Uh, that's, uh, that's, we've had one woman <laughs> governor, as I've said, and it was a rep moderate Republican. Moderation, I think, is the only, and remember, our legislature now has, uh, I don't think it has a half a dozen, maybe a half a dozen members of the House and Senate total. Uh, five, uh, five, I think. I, I think that maybe it's not quite six, but they, it's Dan, nothing. thank you so much for joining me this morning to break down that Republican debate.